In this series, I'm painting a randomly determined space marine, with both the colour scheme and the artistic style picked by spinning two wheels. This time, I'm going to be painting my homebrew chapter, The Redemptionists, and I'm going to be painting it in the style of... Oh! Okay, uh, yeah, I can see that working. So first of all, I built an intercessor from the box with cell shading in mind. I decided to use this Beep Boop PDA forearm because I thought that there were some nice interesting shapes that would work well in the cell shading style. But what is cell shading? Most people when they hear the term think of the video game series Borderlands, though that's not actually cell shading. An example of cell shading in games would be Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. It refers to having a lack of gradients in your colours, and instead of going from say a bright red to a dark red smooth doing so over maybe three different values, a bright red, a medium red, and a dark red. Wind Waker does this, whereas Borderlands actually has smooth gradients between colours. But what it does have is the other sort of defining characteristic of the art style, which is very well-defined black lines around geometries, though not between different colour regions. It's a really cool distinctive style that you can take to an extreme, like in Waltz with Bashir. I didn't want to go quite that far, I kind of like the idea of doing maybe three values for each colour. But I also had other models to look at. I wasn't the first person to try and do this. Lots of people have done cell shaded models before. Looking through other people's attempts, I learned that really the technique works best when the model is bright and super saturated. You're kind of looking for a comic book style. But a common pitfall was that people often, in looking for a really block colour, laid on paint way too thick. So that was something that I was very conscious of in this paint job. Another thing that people did quite frequently, which I knew I didn't want to do, was hashing. So putting black lines over certain areas of the model. As far as I could tell, when I looked at other people's models, it was randomly done. I don't think I saw a single model where the hashing worked. So I decided I wasn't going to do that at all, I was just going to stick to having black lining around the geometry. And the colour scheme that I was going to be working with was this. This was actually my first ever Space Marine, the first 40k model I ever painted back in, I think, 2004. And as you've already seen on the wheel, this was a marine from the Redemptionists chapter. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later. What's clear for now is that the model is predominantly Space Wolf Grey, or now I guess Fenrisian Grey. So with that in mind, the base coat was going to be Fenrisian Grey. Though, I learned from my mistake last time, I did the base first. I put the model down on the base and painted Sterling Mud around so that I didn't have to panic about ruining an otherwise finished paint job. Learn my lesson. With that out of the way though, I airbrushed the whole model Fenrisian Grey, and then did something which may seem a bit counterintuitive. I gave the model a zenithal highlight with a mix of Fenrisian Grey and Vallejo model colour white. Now, that's a bit counterintuitive because the whole point of cell shading is you don't want smooth gradients like, I don't know, an airbrush gives you. But there was method to my madness, and there was also method in spraying Thunderhawk blue from below in an anti-zenithal? Shadow? The reason I did this is because I wanted there to be a large zenithal contrast from the top of the model to the bottom of the model. And in airbrushing, I didn't have to think about where the highlights and the shadows were going to go. All that I had to do to convert the model into cell shading was to look for any gradients between Fenrisian Grey and the highlight or the shadow colour. And then, and it felt kind of weird doing this, erasing that smooth gradient by filling it in with more Fenrisian Grey. This took surprisingly little time, and the end result was really clear, crisp, well-placed highlights and shadows in three different values. With this done, the other big block colour was the red on the shoulder pad trim, and I used Mephiston red for this. The reason why the Marines are this colour is because my intro to 40k was White Dwarf 289, which featured a battle report between Space Wolves and Iron Warriors, and I really liked the look of the Space Wolf army, but I didn't like the whole wolfy thing going on, and I wanted to be able to use Codex Space Marines. So I invented this splinter chapter from the Space Wolves who felt that they had to atone for being too far from the Codex, and they made this redemptionist chapter to redeem themselves, and was strictly Codex compliant. So they were Space Wolf Grey, but without all the wolfy stuff. Also, no, I didn't know about the Redemptionist gang in Necromunda, though this chapter had terrible SEO. <laughs> and then because the chapter was predominantly Space Wolf Grey, I picked the third company so that they could have the red shoulder trim, and that meant that there was an accent colour, which I did as a scar over one of their eyes and was also present on the chapter symbol on the shoulder pads. And that is literally all the lore they have. Like, like that's it. Very, very bare bones. <laughs> 
But with those two big colors done, I then moved on to the most time consuming part of this process, which was the black edge highlighting and panel lining. And this was just done with a lot of patience and using the side of a small brush and Vallejo model color black. Not much to say here, it just took an age. Oh, and for the recess shading and panel lining, I did a oil pin wash. So a very diluted black oil paint, which I would then touch to an area and it would naturally just spread out across the model and fill the recesses. All I had to do then was airbrush it with matte varnish to lock it in and then do a little bit of tidying up because there's a little bit of staining with oil washes like this, but nowhere near as much as if I'd used null oil. With that done, I then moved on to the leathers, which I did in Mornfang Brown and a highlight of XV88, which was a new paint I bought just for this model, and also the paint I used for the base. And with the block colors put in, I just had to do the edge highlighting in black, and um, it was done. I mean, I've got to say, this part of the process was actually very quick. Then it was the golds, which I base coated in Mornfang and then really leaned into the cartoony, super saturated aspect, so was highlighting with Bad Moon's yellow. And I think I may have put a bit of Ungore Flesh just to take the edge off slightly. And that just left the green of the braid on the shoulder pads and the silver, such as on the bolt gun, which were dark grey, light grey and white. And then repeating all these same steps for the helmet. And I didn't film all of this because there's a lot going on behind the scenes at the moment, and I was not in the mood for filming whilst painting. So actually, the next thing I can show you is the finished model. I've got to say, I am really happy with the result on this. It's a very striking model, and I definitely feel like I fulfilled the brief of making it look kind of comic booky. I was expecting this one to take a lot less time than the previous model, the non-metallic metal Ultramarine. And I think it probably did take a little less time, but the black edge highlighting just took so long. I guess that this was maybe 15 hours on this model. Another area of improvement, and it's one of my real weaknesses as a painter actually, is basing. So my bases are just pretty boring. With this guy, I made a real effort to have green on the base in the form of grass tufts to mirror the green on the uh, shoulder pad, but also some red to match the red of the shoulder pads. And uh, the result was this rock, which I put down. It was some slate from an old Games Workshop basing tub. And uh, initially I just painted it normally, like I just dry brushed it with a couple of colors and then realized why it looked so weird. It was the only thing that was not cell shaded. So I then painted it up to be this reddy earth color, which when you highlight it up to almost white, um, it, it kind of just looks like bacon. Lesson for next time, I guess. <laughs> But I think the main thing which didn't work with this model was the black. So I was limited by the color palette that I picked when I was 14, but the black on the bolt gun really doesn't work in this technique because you can't edge highlight black with black. And I did think about doing white or gray, but that didn't seem to be in line with the comic book style I was going for. So unfortunately that part of the model doesn't quite gel, but I think it doesn't ruin the whole effect. But as I say, overall, I'm really chuffed. I think it's a nice contrast to the previous model, and uh, I really enjoy painting in this style. Though I do have two tips if you're planning on doing a whole army in this style. Firstly, definitely replicate my trick with the airbrush. That saved so much time and thought process, and really didn't take very long at all to just turn it into block colours. So definitely do that. And secondly, don't. <laughs> it's a cool effect. The black edge highlighting is a cool effect, but it takes so long and I don't think there's any way to speed it up really. Um, I'm sure if I did 20 of these guys I would get faster but that would probably be 200 hours down the line. <laughs> so I can't in good faith recommend that you even try to do this for a whole army. Looks cool on its own but yeah I am not going to be doing lots of models like this. <laughs> but with that the second model of this painting challenge is complete and now I've just got to find out what I'll be painting next month. Next month I am going to be painting Blood Angels. Never painted Blood Angels before, so this could work with a lot of different styles. Let's see which one I get. Oh, okay. Right, that's gonna look sick, actually. 